Hey folks, this is Vince with Dan's Gaming Addiction, and today I'm going to go over my top 20 tips to help you stay alive in State of Decay 2. This game can be pretty tough for the newcomer. I mean, there's a lot to think about. The game's learning curve can be somewhat high. A newcomer might look at this map and go, oh my gosh, where do I start? Um, all of these supplies that you get uh, when you're looting, what do you pick up, what do you leave behind? Well, I'm going to try and help you out as best as I can. The very first thing I want to talk about is the need to stick to your immediate surroundings. Um, whenever you get your very first base, it's important that you not travel too far away from it. Now, the experienced player can probably get away with it, but as a new player, I highly recommend that you stick close to home. Reason being, it's very possible that the car that you have um, might get destroyed, or you might get ambushed, and you might lose your vehicle. In which case, if you're far from home, let's say I'm all the way down here and something bad happens, I'm either going to have to try and find another car or just huff it all the way home. And that just spells disaster, especially if there's a lot of special infected lurking about. So my advice to you, if you're a newcomer, is uh, when, you, when you have a starter base, and in the case of this map, uh, Providence Ridge, you'll start up here. Um, I highly recommend that you just go around, explore the nearby locations, and loot them. And then whenever you've drained everything in this area, go ahead and move on to the next base, whether it be here, loot everything, and then here, loot everything, then find another base, loot everything, and so on. Don't bother spending tons of gas going all the way across the map and then all the way back home for, you know, just one little loot run. I, I don't recommend that. I would just stick close to home and yeah, I, I, that's if, if you want to survive, I would highly recommend that you do that. Just just stick stick to one base, loot around it, and when you've drained everything in that area, move on to the next base, and then just repeat the process, and you'll stay alive longer that way. The next thing I want to offer is external goals and requests made from other enclaves. Um, you'll get things like the stranded soldiers, cork needs backup. Now, here's the thing. These are not mandatory, okay? I, I When I played State of Decay for the first time way back when, um, I was like, okay, I got to do every single objective that pops up. But again, look at look how far away this is. My base is here, and the objective is all the way down here. I know better now. I am not going to bother going after that. Um, yes, if you are friendly or allied with an enclave, you'll get a perk. Maybe like two extra beds in this, or extra experience rate that. It's it's possible. When you become friends with enclaves and you're allied with them, you'll get some bonuses. But that being said, another, you know, tool, you know, another tip that I would have to, to keep the newcomer alive, your community comes first, everyone else is second. So if you've, if someone is asking for your help and it's right next door to your base, sure, go ahead and help. But if they're all the way across the map, there's a good chance that something bad will happen along the way if you're new to the game. Um, or something, you know, if, if let's say that the event, you know, uh, went badly. Maybe a juggernaut showed up and wiped out the entire community over here and you're stuck, hurt, trying to find your way home. It's just it's just better stick stick close to home and only accept missions that are close to home. And even then, if you're still not comfortable, just don't do them. Worst case scenario, they get mad at you and they and they leave town. Um, a new enclave will take their place at some point, so it's not like you're le losing a whole lot. Uh, number three, tip number three. Um, whenever you create your base for the first time, I would highly recommend that the infirmary be built first. The infirmary is probably one of the most important buildings in the game. As a newcomer, your characters are going to take a ton of damage, they're going to get hurt, they're going to get infected by those plague zombies, so you're going to need a way to keep cycling out characters. And if you don't have an infirmary, um, then it's just not going to happen. In fact, you want to level up your infirmary as much as possible. Um, I'm on infirmary 3, and I think that's the highest I can take it. Now be aware that the more that you upgrade buildings in your base, the higher the supply cost. Um, you've got different resources like food, medicine, ammo, materials, and fuel. And as you upgrade these structures, they will consume more resources per day. So just be advised that the more you upgrade something, the more resources you spend. But I still think the infirmary is the 
single most important building in the entire game. Without it, you're not going to be able to cycle out your characters as efficiently, and um, that's bad. If you don't have anyone to, to go on a run with, then you're going to get mauled, and you're going to run out of supplies, and that's that. Um, and then after the infirmary, I would recommend a workshop. That way you can repair your, your melee weapons and, and uh, ranged weapons. Uh, tip number four, um, I would recommend not repairing every weapon that you have. Um, I have something called throwaway weapons, and I use them when I'm going after trivial things. You'll see that I have a ton of melee weapons in my box. Now, what I could do if I wanted to, it's not very efficient, but if I wanted to, I've got this, this replica bastard sword, which is really good. I could just keep using that and just continuously repair it. If you don't have the scrap to do that, and scrap is very important in this game, what you could do is keep the crap weapons that you get and then just use them as a one-time thing. Um, once they break, either re just recycle them for scrap, like you can salvage a weapon. So for example, this, this wooden bat, um, it's broken. So what I could do is I can hit X to salvage and I'll get seven scrap from that. So my advice is just have a bunch of throwaway weapons and then once you use them and they're broken that's it either put them back or scrap them something that way you're not spending your hardcore or hard earned uh, scrap all the time um, and you can save your really good weapons for when you really need them uh, tip number five keep at least 400 influence if at all possible um, I believe most of the outposts that you could probably get in the game, yeah, it's claiming resources 400 uh, influence. So outposts are pretty important in this game. They help you get resources passively over time. Um, once you gain the builder um, perk, uh, the, the leader perk, which I'll talk about a little bit later, um, you'll have water and electricity already. Um, but there are outposts out in the wasteland that will let you get water and electricity for free, which is nice. But for the most part, you're only going to be able to afford maybe the, the cheaper outposts, uh, ones that offer food collection or ammo collection or health collection over time. Um, so keep 400 in reserve all at all times for that. And the other reason why you may want to keep a reserve is because there is a radio option where there's something called a vehicle delivery. And I don't know if everyone has this with the new Juggernaut edition, but check to see if you have vehicle delivery in your radio, radio menu. Um, if you ever are in a bind, let's say you are far from home and there's, your vehicle is totaled, there's no way back other than walking. You could spend 400 influence or 200 influence to call down a vehicle next to you and then you can get home that way. So I would recommend keeping at least 400 influence available at all times. Don't, I know it's tempting to buy stuff with influence, but I would say just keep it, you know, in case of a rainy day. Uh, tip number six, don't go on foot alone. Um, in the beginning of the game, you could probably get away with it. In most cases, you start, um, like in this Providence Ridge map, you start here. You could walk like to there or down here or down here. And in the beginning of the game, there's really not a whole lot of those special zombies like the ferals or the juggernauts. But as you continue playing the game, it gets more and more dangerous. More of those plague zombies show up. In which case, going alone on foot is just... You're, a, a feral will catch you and kill you if you're not skilled or careful. So um, I would advise bringing a car with you everywhere you go. And if you can't do that, then find people to bring along with you, whether it be friendly community members or other Enclave members. Uh, tip number seven. While I did say earlier that your community comes first, there is an advantage for accepting missions that are near you. You will sometimes get a follower whenever you accept Enclave missions, and it'll say, you know, go clear this out, or go clear that out, or go here and, and get so many play examples. Don't do it. Just accept the follower and accept the mission, but then go around and do your own thing. You'll have a follower for quite a while, for free. Normally, you would have to pay the follower, uh, pay an enclave for someone to follow you. When you accept a mission, you get a free follower, or even two, and you can just have them follow you around while you clear out plague hearts and infestations. They will eventually catch wind of this and go home on their own, and the mission will fail. But for a, a, a while, uh, quite a while, you'll have some free followers, and that would be a good time to go after a plague heart or clear out infestation. 
or a tough area, or even, you know, loot a very large area, and they'll watch your back while you do it. So if you are going to accept Enclave missions, there's there's nothing to say that you have to do it quickly unless there's, unless there's a timer involved. Um, tip number eight, cars are pretty darn scarce. Um, unless you have a lot of influence and can do that vehicle delivery option that I was talking about earlier. So... Because there's such a limited resource, I would highly recommend, I know it's tempting, to run over every zombie that you see. And yes, you do get influence for doing that. But I would actually avoid running over zombies with your vehicles. Just because, like I said, they're a scarce resource. Toolkits in the very beginning of the game are tough to tough to, to maintain. Um, you can find something in the environment and toolkits uh, will repair your vehicles. But only by a limited amount. And again, you only have so many of them. So, um, and, and yes, you can craft more at some point. Once you upgrade your workshop to the highest level possible, I can't right now because I don't have knowledge of mechanics in this run through, but at some point you will be able to craft like your, yeah, knowledge of mechanics. I cannot craft this toolkit without knowledge of mechanics, but once I get mechanics, I'll be able to do it. But in the very beginning of the game, it's highly doubtful that you'll have it. Um, so I would recommend not running over every zombie that you see. And saving your vehicle's durability for tough situations or for those um, infestations, rather than getting out of your car and getting and manually attacking eight zombies at once, just run them over with your vehicle. Save your save your vehicle's durability for those infestations and for other nasty surprises. Um, tip number nine: um, use followers that are not from your community as meat shields when you're attacking a juggernaut. Let's say there's a juggernaut in the environment. And you don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it because it's pretty nasty, unless, again, you're experienced. What you could do is sit back and let other, on, like, lure it to a friendly town and let them deal with it. And then when it's on its knees, um, after taking so much damage, just go in and get the kill. And you'll get the, it's easy influence that way. I know it's kind of mean and heartless to have, you know, other people do the work for you. Then you take credit for the kill, but this is a computer game. <laughs> Make use of what you have and don't be sorry for it. Um, tip number 10, crossbows. These things are silent and there's a chance that you'll get the bolt back after you shoot it. So rather than take a pistol with you and attract all sorts of attention, um, yes, there are silencers, but, um, I just find that a good, a good crossbow, like there's the hunting crossbow or the echo crossbow. Um, those are, those are top notch, really good. Uh, the downside is that you can fire them once and then it takes some time to reload. But if you're a stealthy, if you're good at being stealthy, then the crossbow will serve you very well. You can take out entire infestations from a distance without even drawing any attention. So I would recommend the crossbow as a weapon if you have one. Tip number 11, um, spread out your outposts. Don't put an outpost, let's say that your base is, again, your starting base is going to be here. It may be tempting to put an outpost here, then an outpost here, then an outpost right here. The reason why you want to spread them out is because, let's say in the future you do take a base that is somewhere down here. You're going to want an outpost maybe up here at this intersection or over here at this intersection. That way you can easily drop stuff off as you need to. I would have an outpost in the upper right of the map, upper left of the map, maybe the middle, maybe southwest, maybe southeast. It's just different areas that way if you run into trouble... There's something nearby for you to escape to and drop off resources. And that's, that's another good thing about having an outpost um, in a town that's populated. I mean, normally you'd have to drive all the way home to unload all your stuff. Um, you don't have to do that with an outpost. Just if you have an outpost in town, like say I have an outpost here, I could explore this, loot it, come back, unload. Explore this, loot it, come back, unload, and so on. So having an outpost in a populated town that you haven't explored yet is really helpful. It'll save you a lot of time. Tip number 12. Um, there are four leader bonuses in the game. Um, there's Builder, Sheriff, Warlord, and I'm always forgetting the fourth one. Um, but I would recommend... Oh, Trader. Um, the one that I would prioritize first is the Builder. That is, take, take a recruit, uh, recruit a leader that is a builder and you'll, you'll know that they're a builder by hovering over their um their citizen standing and it'll say leadership builder at the end of the game whenever you complete it you'll have earned a perk to pay based on whoever your leader type was so if you beat a run through as a builder you'll gain the builder perk 
Whenever you start a new playthrough, you can choose two of the four leader perks. The Builder allows you to get free water and electricity throughout your entire base in the next run through if you choose it. Um, the Sheriff is nice because it gives you free stuff every day. The Trader, um, I think, gives you like 4,000 influence at the start of the map and a Trader will come by every day and um, you'll get like free influence every day. The Warlord is the only one that I have not done yet, but I do believe um, it it gives you like a free upgrade barracks building or something like that. It was the least appealing to me, so I'm doing the Warlord last, and that's what I'm working on now on my community. But yeah, if, if it's your first run through, I would highly recommend the Builder, um, the Builder Leader, and then that way in the next run through, Leader uh, Water and Power will not be an issue. You won't have to to waste precious outpost space fueling your 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 base with electricity and water. Yes, you can use mods. Um, you can say, click on a workshop, click on mods, and then you can run, you can run a particular room with mods. Um, like it says, install water cooler provides water to a facility. You can do mods to help you do that, but if you just want free water and power, then take the builder perk on your second playthrough and, you know, make sure you complete it on your first playthrough as the, as the builder leader. Um, next tip number 13, keep morale above average, if at all possible in doing so you'll get experience rate increases, global build action speed, facility action speed. If it's low, people will get mad. They'll fight with each other. Um, in the very beginning of the game, it's difficult to keep morale up because you don't have a whole lot of structures. But, um, my recommendation is, um, the watchtower, people seem to like watchtowers, um, having good medical facilities and um, has decent tools. Um, so make sure that you upgrade your infirmary and your workshop to ensure that you've got good tools. At some point, you'll get a large slot. Um, this is my second base for the Providence Ridge map. The large slot, it's tempting to put, say, a large farm there. But if you're, if you're good about looting, you won't really need it. Um, so I would put a lounge here instead. And the lounge will provide a number of passive morale bonuses. In addition to that, you can engage in morale activities. For example, there's poker nights or mix a round of drinks, play games, uh, schedule a break. There's different ways to increase morale. So once you get a second base, I would consider the lounge as an important building to keep your, to keep your morale up. Especially if you don't feel like going around the map constantly dealing with infestations because the more infestations that are around the lower your morale gets because people complain about it like for example look here the only negatives many infestations many infestations many infestations and so on so if you don't feel like clearing them out all the time then get a lounge building to help offset that and make sure you've got a watchtower all right um where are we tip number 14 um, you'll waste supplies if you deposit rucksacks and go over your storage limit. Um, you should have a storage building in your base, and it'll say plus 25 storage, plus 20 storage, whatever. Make sure that you do not go over your limit. You can find out what your limit is by clicking on the resources uh, button on the left of your, your base menu. It'll say food, 38 out of 45, or 35 out of 45. Never go over the max. If you do, and you wait too long to rectify it, those resources will be wasted. Think of them as being left out in the rain and, and spoiling or what have you. So just make sure that you're not going over your limit. Um, if you do happen to get rucksacks and bring them back, what I do is I have a dummy car that I don't use, and I just use it as storage. Um, where is my vehicles at? I'm sure, there they are. I have one car that I'm always going out with, and then a second car that I'm just sort of, yep, so here. The second car I'm not using. I've got a bunch of rack sacks in here. That way it's a backup in case I run into an emergency, what have you. I have the materials I need to quickly replenish everything. So just be, just keep an eye out for that. Just, just don't go depositing things willy-nilly in terms of resources. Check your supply limits before you start depositing. Um, tip number 15, if you're going to go on a long trip, Keep uh, a gas can and uh, a, to a repair kit in your car. That way, if something happens or you underestimated how long or overestimated how long, um, how much gas you had, 
and you get stuck somewhere, you have a backup. That's just a quick and easy, long trip, gas can for fueling your car, and a toolkit to repair your car should something bad happen. Tip number 16, don't drive a smoking car. Duh. If it blows up, you could get killed. The stuff inside your trunk, you could lose that. Don't do it. Easy peasy. Step number 17. On future runs, and this is probably more for, I guess beginners would be helpful to know this, but um, you'll be given the option at the end of a run, whenever you completely complete a, a, a map, you can take people with you into, and, and deposit them into your pool. I think you can hold up to 50 people. And whenever you start a new run, you'll be able to choose three of those people. I would recommend, um, based on the skills that they have, um, to choose three based on the skills that they have. So I would go with medicine. Medicine is important because you'll need the medicine to upgrade your infirmary. And I did say earlier that your infirmary is probably one of the most important buildings uh, to have in your base. So if you're going to choose uh, three starting people for your community, um, let me see if I can find the initial three I had for this run through. I think Ernie was one of them. He had metalworking and knowledge of craftsmanship. Um, I chose Michael, who had construction, and one more, um, Brummet, medicine. So I would always start a map with medicine. That way you can get your, your infirmary up and running right from the gate and not have to worry about um, people getting sick and dying on you because you didn't have any way to heal them. Okay, so yeah, if you're going to start a new run and you can choose people, start with someone with medicine. There are other people or there are other skills to have, and I'm not going to go over them now, but um, medicine I would prioritize if at all possible. Uh-oh, something's happening here. Oh, I think we're being attacked. Quick tip. It's not on my list, but I just this just reminded me. Go behind a door, close it. And then wait for zombies to just to just sort of just to sort of build on it, like like that one back there. There's two of them now. If I can get to it, no, I didn't get to it in time. But if ha if I had gotten to it in time, like I can close it. Well, let's let's try that again. All right, didn't work. What I was trying to say. <laughs> was as zombies um, gather at a gate or a door, they'll start pounding on it for a little bit of time. Let them do it for a little bit. And then when no more are building up on the door. Okay, thank you. Just just charge the door and all the zombies on the other side will n be knocked down. You can quickly go in and, and insta-kill one or two of them with your finishing move. Quick tip. Um, so... Tip number 18 is where we're at. Um, when there's too much loot, let's say you're out on a run and there's too much loot to bring back, and you're like, well, what in the world do I prioritize? What what should I drop? First of all, check your trunk of your car to see if you have any free room. If you don't, there are things like firecrackers, um, things like decoys. You, those are not necessarily things that you need. Yes, they're nice to have, but you don't need them. If there's, like, painkillers or toolkits or gas cans or t tool books uh, or textbooks, um, you're going to want to prioritize those over firecrackers. So don't be afraid to drop these distraction decoy objects in favor of explosives, things that are actually really important. In case you're wondering, the textbooks, again, this is more for the newcomer. Textbooks, um, everyone has skills in this game. And some of your recruits only have four. This lady has five, so I can't teach her anything new. But um, let's see if I can find Korea. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, Korea here has not a fifth skill. What I could do is I can give her a textbook. She can read it, and she'll gain a skill in that. So that's a way of gaining more skills for your group. And again, skills are needed so that you can upgrade different rooms in your base. Um, again, the workshop two needs mechanics in order to upgrade to three. So at some point, I'm going to look for a mechanic textbook to give to probably Coria, and she can read it, and then I'll be able to upgrade this, okay? So, yeah, um, if there's a lot to loot and you don't know what to drop, drop the decoy items first. Um, if you have to, maybe the plague samples, but um, 
I would definitely keep the textbooks, keep the medicine, keep the supplies, keep weapons, ammo. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of a, a no-brainer as to what would probably be useful and what wouldn't be. Um, tip number 19, um, avoid quick searching. I'm impatient. I do it. I shouldn't, but I do it anyway. Um, quick searching, if it fails, will alert. Uh, zombies to your presence and they'll just automatically spawn it's not like it'll call zombies that are already in the world no no zombies will just spawn near you and you'll have to fight them so if you're new to the game don't fast search you can fast search by holding in shift while you're searching or whatever whatever button it is for you um just don't do it um if you have to and you're in a hurry just quick search the last container in the building okay that way if something does happen you can just quickly loot it and then get out of there and there's no, no other containers in the house to get, so you can just, you can easily make your escape. And then finally, um, tip number 20. Human enemies are probably the worst in the game. The toughest, outside of ferals, I think. The toughest to, to deal with. They have deadly accuracy at range with their ranged weapons, so um, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them is not smart. There are three ways that I deal with them. One is, use a car to run them over. If you can do that, they will shoot at your car and it will catch fire. So it may not be the best option. Make sure if you do do that, make sure your car is repaired and upgraded and all that jazz. Um, the other way, uh, the second way to go about doing that is to sneak up to their base and use something like Zombait. Um, as you play, you'll get these these lures like um, Dose of Zedi. There's like special, I don't think I have any on me right now, but th there's something called Zombait that you can get. And it's throwable, and you can throw. I, what I do is I sneak up to their base and I throw it into their house, and I'll watch all the zombies just converge on that location. And if you don't have any of that, the third way to deal with them is use your car and just honk your horn, and slowly drive up to their house while keeping your horn pressed, and all of these zombies will come after you, and then cut behind their house so that the zombies have to go through the or yeah cut through the enemy house. So that, uh, cut behind the house, so that the enemies have to go through the enemy house to get to you. And by that time, they would have noticed your enemies and start attacking them. It may take a couple of tries to get that right. And if they have ranged weapons, they will probably knock out the zombies. Um, if you can get a juggernaut or feral to, to notice you and then quickly turn on the enemies that you're trying to eliminate, um, that's even better. But you're not always going to be able to count on that. So yeah, that is 20 quick tips on State of the K2, staying alive. Um, are there more? Absolutely. Um, it's just the 20 that I could think of while I was watching TV upstairs uh, just now. So um, if I think of any others to warrant another video, I'll go ahead and release another video. But hopefully this gives you um, a little bit of help on your future endeavors. Well, this is Vince. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.